creating a web app and outputting content into the web app. So in this case, we're just outputting the hello world. And then we're going to provide a second example where we've got an object that's going to be turned into a JSON a stringified version of JSON. And then we're going to output that content as a meme type of JSON. So this is going to be perfect for your requests using the web app as an endpoint for the data. So that's all coming up in this lesson. Go ahead and log into your Google account. Go over to script.google.com forward slash home. And this is where we're going to create a standalone script. And then within the drop down on the left hand side where we've got the main menu, select and create a new project. So this will open up the app script editor. And this is where we're going to be creating some web app. So we'll just call it web app one, rename the project to a name that you're going to be able to reference later on. And we're going to be building some web apps. So let's start by setting up our web app. So web apps can be published and it must contain the following requirements. So either a do get or a do post. So those are the methods that are going to be run automatically. And it's a function that returns the HTML service or the HTML output. So you can use either HTML service or the content service to output that object. So in this case, for most of it, we are going to be using do get, and this provides us a way to output content just within the web browser, because that's going to be making a get request. So create the function and you can update that existing function to do get. So this will give us the basic structure for the web app and users can be set to access the contents of the web app directly within their browsers. So both standalone and bound scripts can be turned into web apps. So even if you have a Google Sheet or another type of Google Workspace document, you can use the Google Apps Script Editor and create a web app from that as well. I'm going to make the screen slightly larger. Content service is a way to return back some content into the page. So first of all, let's set up a variable value. And this is going to be a string value returning back the content to the web page. So whenever we launch the web app, so in this case, we're going to create hello world. And the way that the function will work, function will be returning back the user interface object. So it's created in either the HTML service or the content service. And it can be as simple as just regular raw text content within a string value. So let's return back and using the content service. So we can set the create the text output. And what we want to do is we want to return back the contents of the variable val into the web application. So the next step is to deploy the web app. So you can use the same steps to create content for the web app and deploying it will allow you to access the values using the web browser to a web URL. So under the deploy button at the top, select new deployment. And from the select type on the left hand side, select the web app, give your web app a description and I'll just call it test one. Then you've got an option to execute the app. So you can select the account that you want to use to execute the app. And you can use either the current account that you're creating the app with, or you can select that the user accessing the web app needs to log in and verify the application. Now there are some things to consider when you are doing this, that if it is the user accessing the web app, then they're going to need to have permissions to access the content within your Google Drive. So they might not necessarily have those permissions and it will throw errors within the app. So for this, I'm going to be just executing as the main app that's creating the main account that's creating the app. And then the next option is to check to see who has access to the app. So by default, it's only yourself. So that means that you have to be logged in to your Google account in order to access the app at the web URL. There's a few options here that you can select. So you can select anyone with a Google account. So that means that they have to have logged into their Google account in order to access the web app. And that's anyone with a Google account. And then there's the open access to anyone with just the URL. If you are using an organizational account, then you will also have a fourth option to access only those that are within the organization. So that would mean that anyone that has the same email domain name would be able to access it as long as they've logged into their account. So let's go ahead and deploy the web app. When you do do the deployment, 
It's going to update the deployment. It's going to set that up. Sometimes it just takes a few minutes or a few seconds to set that up. And once it's ready, it will give you the version, the timestamp when it was created, and it'll give you the deployment ID. So you can use this ID to reference the script content. And then within the web app, under the web app tab, it will give you a web URL. So you can use this and you can share this to access and for others to be able to access that web app. So let's go ahead and we'll copy it or you can click it and it'll open up within the new browser window. And we see we've just got the output here of hello world that's being output from the web app. Now that you've deployed the web app, you can see the deployment within the manage deployments. So you can always access the URL and the ID of the deployment. You can edit them and you can archive the deployments as well. Under the test deployments, uh, so this is where when you're developing your web application, you can get a development URL. So the difference between the development URL and the executable URL is that at the end of the development URL, it's going to have the slash DEV, whereas the executable will have the EXEC. And the difference here is that when we make an update to the development URL and we refresh it, it's going to output that new value into the, the web URL. Whereas when we're going into the regular web app, the executable, we're going to still have the old version. So because it hasn't been redeployed and it hasn't, those changes haven't been committed yet. So keep that in mind. And also when you are developing, the only ones that will have access to the development URL are ones that are shared within the project. So unless they have their account is shared with others, and you've scared your app script with others, they're not going to be able to see the development URL. You also do have the choice to share the project with others where you can select and this way, just like the other Google content, you can share this with others. So you can select by adding people or groups and providing them access to your web application. So that's how you can create a basic output of content and output it into the page. So you're also able to output content in a JSON format. So i show you how to do that, where we're gonna get some content, and instead of outputting it as text content, we can set the meme type in the content service to output it within a JSON format. So in order to open up the options within the new version of the editor on a Windows machine, you can right-click anywhere within the editor, and that will open up the options here. You can also use the shortcuts for the command palette. And there's also, if you are on a Mac, you can control and that will open up the control click and that will open up the pop-up window. And as well, you can just use the shortcuts. So I'm gonna comment this one out and we'll create another one with the JSON meme type. I'll create a JavaScript object and output that as JSON. So selecting, and doing the command palette. And within here, you can select the comment. So providing a toggle block comment. And there's also the shortcut in order to do the toggle of the block comment. So what that will do is that will automatically comment out that block of code that was selected when we selected that function. It's creating another one for do get. And this time we're gonna create a JSON object and then output that. So it can be just a my object and then within the object let's add in some values so for test it maybe says hello test one can have a value of world to three can have a value of five so that we've got our object and let's uh, do the return of the content service and output the object and i'll just rename this file for the consistency and this actually should be do get so let's save that and refresh it. So it outputs it as an object. So it's not what we want. We don't want this type of object output. So we wanna construct this into a stringified version. So we wanna put it in a text format. And we can do this using the JSON stringify method and similar to what we have with JavaScript. So that we take the value and we output it in a text format. And let's go back out and refresh it 
So we can see the content being output in a text format. So this is going to be returned back as text. But if we want to output it as JSON data, we can specify that. And this is going to be one of the requirements if you are using and connecting to it with your request that's going to be expecting it within a JSON format. You can set the meme type under the content service and then select the meme type and set it as JSON. So now when we output it, the meme type is going to be JSON. So it doesn't look any different when we're in the browser, but if we are making this uh, a request to this as an endpoint using and expecting JSON to be returned, then this is going to be really helpful for providing it back and setting the meme type as a JSON content that's being output. And then the request will recognize it as such. And then once you've completed your application, you can go back to the new deployment and redeploy the web app. And I'll call it test2 because now we're outputting it as JSON. And deploy the new version. And we can copy it or we can open it up. And also notice that the executable deployment is not the same as the previous web URL that we had earlier. So this is actually outputting it and deploying it on a separate URL. So the URL has changed. And in order to manage the deployments, we've got a version for test one with a specific URL and then a version for test two. That's going to be another web app URL. So in that case, keep in mind that those endpoints are going to change. So whatever application you have connecting to it, when you do make the update to it, that this is going to be a changed endpoint. And that's going to also have to be changed in the script that's requesting the content.